Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for watching. We're here today to set up my mid-May to mid-June budget. I've been in an interesting position this month because I've had to be quite reflective and although it seems very early to be worrying about it, in some ways I'm actually very late in considering things like my retirement <laughs> and I realize it's quite the cliche at 40 to start thinking of the big picture but um, the fact is because I'm single and because I'll probably end up doing it alone which is not a grab for sympathy there I'm perfectly fine with it but you can only plan for the situation you have and if it changes in the future then it changes but I don't really have a safety net in, sh in uh, the sense of you know, in my own family and things like that, because I, I don't have a partner, I don't have children and things of that nature. I don't have someone else that I would share these responsibilities with. And so what that really means is I've got to start looking and paying off my national insurance really kind of triggered this thought because now it was a case of, okay, now this is paid. What are we going to do with that regular payment of money? Um, I know that you have seen me put quite a lot into my pension because I've been trying to catch up with that. And part of the national insurance, the reason it was so important is because it funds the state pension. So now I'm just looking, OK, where do I need to be and how can I strike a balance between enjoying my life? Because you don't want to only be working for a future that frankly might never come. You don't know what's going to happen but you've still got to balance. If that future does come, you have to be prepared. So I watch uh, a few different things online. I don't know if any of you guys watch Caleb Hammer, but something that frustrates me so much is when these really young kids come on. And like, don't get me wrong because the amount of financial disasters, like I'm technically a millennial, like because they changed the things. Uh, I'm an older millennial, but I was born in 83, right? So technically... But if you think of the amount of world disasters we have been through <laughs> and financial disasters we have been through in our adult lives when, when we would have gotten involved and started these things, um, it, it's not surprising to me <laughs> that people my age and people younger are just like, well, screw the future, man. No one knows what's going to happen. I'm not going to prepare for it at all. But now I'm actually older. I'm like, dude, I am the future. I need to think of something. <laughs> so you can't live as if you're going to die at 30 but you also can't, can't live for the potential of retirement. And sometimes balancing that is really hard for me. Sorry, I realize you might not have uh, signed up for this conversation when you opened up my budget. Do excuse me. If you drag the little thing down the bottom, you'll see when my numbers come up and that's when I start talking about them. But essentially I've got to decide how I'm moving forward with my money to prepare for retirement. And the really big one I want really is the security of having somewhere to live. Because one of the things, the cost of living crisis that you're seeing everywhere, um, it's a big talking point in Britain particularly, but it's going up everywhere, is you see the horrible impact of people who are on a fixed income, that now inflation is just driving them into the ground and with rents going up everywhere. I don't want to be in a position when I'm older and I don't have as much potential to be able to earn extra money if needed, that my, my rent's gone up and I can't afford to live. It, it's some terrible stories coming out of it. But I also do not have the money to buy a place, <laughs> which, which is problematic. And to be honest, even if I had the money, I don't really want the responsibility of a house that I don't live in. Yes, technically I could rent it out, I suppose, and I could put... I guess I could put it in the hands of a, a managing company, I suppose. There's lots of possibilities there. But it's a moot point because I don't have the money. But it's a possibility for future, I suppose. But I don't really want to own a house that I don't live in. And the thing is, right now and, and in the future, that the way I work and the way international contracts work within education, my housing is provided. So I don't need to own a house to live my life. And on one hand, I would like to have a base in the UK so that when the summer's coming up right now, I could just go back to the UK and I could spend the summer there. I mean this in the sense of my own place, not visiting family and stuff. But if I did that, I couldn't then rent it out because I, they wouldn't be able to live there to my schedule, you know? Like if I decide I wanna go home three, four times a year and they're trying to rent, that's just not gonna work. 
And it assumes a lot of things. It assumes you're going to have good tenants. It assumes you're going to have any tenants. It assumes the whole house doesn't burn down. There's various costs to being a landlord, you know? And um, my dad rents out houses as kind of a side hustle of his own and uh, for his own retirement. And like, I know, practically speaking, what the risks are. Like I said, I don't have the money to do anything now, but it just makes me think, what do I want to happen? At the moment, I'm kind of on the idea that if I literally just saved for the next 20 years, 500 a month for the next 20 years in some kind of investment account, I suppose, then I could put, because I don't need a fancy place. I need, like, I can get an apartment somewhere to retire into. Like, I could save up enough money with, with some investment growth, knock wood, if I was lucky, <laughs> um, to be able to afford a place to live. And that would maybe be the plan. And because I do have, even if I retire slightly earlier, because my state pension isn't due to kick in until like 67 now, and that's, a, that's if it doesn't rise even further. Oh, it might actually be 68, I don't quite remember. But if I work to like 62 even, like I could get a fair amount built up in that time. Now in the UK, you can do a drawdown from your pay from your payment from your pension that's uh, tax free as well. There's just there's a lot of possibilities and I'm not really sure. This is a really long story. Sorry, like I said, you didn't sign up for it. But I don't exactly know how I want to plan my future is the thing. And because of the nomadic state of my life, the fact that I do move country to country, the fact that my housing is provided, there are certain things on the expected timeline of life that I just never did. I never got to the point where it was like, okay, I'm going to go buy my own property. Okay, I'm going to meet someone and I'm going to have kids. And it's totally fine that I didn't. Like, I'm at peace with my life choices. But it does bring up certain practical things that I'm now like, okay, so what do I want to do then? Which is a really long-winded way of telling you I don't really have an answer I'm not sure. I feel like there might be a better way that I just don't know or I'm not seeing or I don't know. I don't know what the best option is. I'm a little bit concerned about being shackled with something like a mortgage payment. I wouldn't do it now because I think the housing market is just in a state right now, even if I had the cash, which I don't. But if I were to save, would it be worth buying sooner and having me not live there? or just buying when I'm ready to live in it. I'm not sure. But anyway, you're going to see, wow, I'm at nine minutes. Um, you're going to see on my uh, budget, there's a new category where national insurance used to be just called future, because I don't have anything more precise to be able to call it. And at the moment, I think I'm gonna keep up with my pension payments. I'm gonna have probably 500 a month into the future and depending on what I end up happen what I end up happening wow my English depending on what ends up happening in terms of do I end up staying here do I change jobs if I stay here my salary goes up after my first contract finishes and so I'll have a little bit of extra money to put into places but right now it's a very vague category because I recognize a need but I don't necessarily recognize the path so put suggestions down below if you've got any insight into this because I'm feeling a little bit lost with it, if I'm honest. I know I need money to do anything, so I'm saving money, but I'm not really sure the direction it should take. All right, so let's look at my numbers. Let's take a look at the numbers so far. Some of the actual costs are already filled in because I do also use this document as my spending tracker through the month. So feel free to ignore that for the moment. It will obviously will be updated as we go. Salary was 1313 as normal. That's my 1320 salary minus my laundry costs. And I rolled over 60 OMR from the previous balance because I had a little bit left over because we got paid early. That gave me a total of 1373, but I actually only sent home 801, and there was a reason for that. I'm just gonna go through my fixed bills, and when we get to that reason, I will explain it. So fixed bills, as per usual, were home, internet, uh, electricity, cleaner, and phone. Um, I've got a little bit built up in phone, I think I might have mentioned, it's a couple of days later now, so uh, I think I might have mentioned when I did my intro. Um, I might not need to fill that up anymore next month. I can give it a, a few months grace, but we'll see how much my roaming charge cost me. And for the cleaner, 
you can see, I just told you to ignore the actual costs, but you can see I took 10 out there. She doesn't come until Thursday, but I've taken out the cash point, which is why I still counted it. But the projected costs have no reason to change. So 37, 15, 20, 15, pretty standard. I will say the electricity is getting a little bit more expensive now. It was 41 degrees Celsius here in Oman today. So lots of AC and uh, I don't see that changing for the next few months because it's only going to get hotter. I think we might have been... They said we're having a heat wave at the moment. I don't know if we hit the record for a May temperature, but it's certainly expected to be very hot. It's at the point now where when we're in the shade, the air feels hot even. Like, it's not even being in the direct sun. But anyway, you don't need to hear my pasty British skin whining about the Omani heat. And uh, so that was 87 Omani Real. And then we go back into our variable expenses over here. Down here to the variable expenses, groceries is getting its usual 120. I think I might be over the hump now with toiletries and uh, like cleaning products and stuff. I feel like I bought quite a lot in my last few trips. Man, they were just bumping my grocery bill up. So I've got to be a bit more careful with that this month. Uh, transport is getting 20. That might vary a little bit. Um, actually, no, it shouldn't be too bad. I was going to say I need to go to the airport. And do they gouge you or what coming back from the airport? Like The O-Taxi app that I use isn't allowed to pick you up from arrivals uh, because there's, um, there's like an exclusive contract with the airport taxi service. But the airport taxis will, will charge you five times the price. So apparently you can get around it by telling taxi to come to departures and then walking over there i'm going to check out how feasible that is when i come back um in in the summer because i've got a friend who's dropping me to and from the airport this time around for this weekend so i shouldn't have any extra costs there but it's something i'll have to watch in july school is getting its usual 20 and then beauty and health is getting 30 because uh, my skincare my dudes my skincare I'm just trying to take a little bit more care of my body. Uh, Miss Comb is getting 10. Eating at delivery. I thought I had deleted this section. I think I might actually just go in and delete that right now. I thought I already had. Because I was finding I just wasn't using it. It was coming out of spending anyway, which is 25. And then clothing got a little bit extra this time around. Because I am traveling this weekend. And I'm also traveling in the summer. So I did want to get some, uh, just a few summer dresses and things. And I probably need to go and get another pair of shoes. I think I need a new pair of sandals. But I'm going to see what's there. Oh, I'm very sorry. The call to prayers just started. So if you can hear it behind in the background, I do apologize. So this is the reason I didn't send as much home this month. Uh, basically, I had my money for Dubai saved in my travel fund in the UK. But I realized I get charged uh, to use my card internationally when it comes to my UK accounts. So it just made more sense to have it in my Amani one and then um, figure out the UK stuff after. So I just kept back the equivalent of the money I had saved in my travel fund. I've sent that money home now. So that's why I only sent 811 real. I've sent my um, salary excess home. And then I'm just going to transfer my travel money into my regular account to make up that shortfall. So I'll end up with the same amount I would have, but it's just in a different place. So Dubai has got 200 Amani Real, which is around £400 just over, which is what I had saved for it. And then the £400 shortfall is going to come from my travel fund in my income for my international money. I hope that makes sense in the way I've explained it. I will show you when we come over here and look at my UK money now. But I took out a um, hundred of that and I changed it into local currency, which I can't remember at the moment. Is it dinar? I might be making that up. I can't remember. You a dollar? Don't know. Have to look. But that's why my total of 562 is so high because um, 200 of it is actually kind of reappropriated from my travel fund but that did mean that I only sent 811 home um, and the exchange rate was so awful you guys it just really was 811 and bear in mind that was with the 60 that I had um, rolled over as well so I was expecting even before I had that rollover to get around 
1600 pounds and then with the rollover i only ended up getting 1618 exchange rate was absolutely appalling um extra income i counted youtube i can't remember how much i got from youtube oh i should have checked that usually i only have one thing in here but also i've got them to buy money so youtube i must have gotten about 900 pounds i think just under that i think yes because I put just over 400, so I'm guessing, yeah, around um, 850, 900 pounds, somewhere around that mark. But it added together as 1336, which gave me a grand total of 2,954 to be working with in my savings. So my emergency fund ended up with 200, which puts the balance up to 2,400 now. I think eventually I want about 10,000 in that emergency fund, but that's definitely going to be a slow roller, you know? <laughs> If I had no other money than the emergency fund, I'd be a bit concerned by that. But I do have sinking funds and I was considering, and I'll show you this when I go down, maybe putting more into my emergency fund. But the fact is, I can always empty my sinking funds if I need to. So it was six of one, half a dozen of the other, really. There was no other spending because everything's coming out of the Dubai money, which is a total of 200 in this category. When it comes to my fixed bills, uh, we have £10 for Spotify, £3 for YouTube. That doesn't change. My pension, I haven't paid yet because I'm still waiting for the YouTube money to go in. But that's gone up to 537 And the reason it's gone up by £4 is because I'm a bit OCD and I needed the rounded off number. <laughs> 1350 just makes it easier. So we do have a new category here, though. And if you listen to my huge ramble before getting to the numbers instead of skipping through, I've just called this future because, frankly, I can't decide what the best way to use this money is, but I know I need it. So right now, I'm just I probably will invest it so that inflation doesn't eat it alive. But I just need a pot of money and I will decide what I'm doing with it later, I suppose. But that's what we're doing instead of national insurance now that it's finally gone. I need to look at kind of longer term plans. So even if I end up doing literally 500 a month until I retire, at least then I will have a pot of money that's not tied into my pension. Because the one danger is putting all the money into the pension, which was one of the other options, just investing more in there. But then it's locked up until you can unlock it. And if I end up retiring early, which quite the thought considering my finances, but let's say I ended up uh, retiring at 62 or 63 or something, uh, my state pension wouldn't start until later. And you just, I'd need a pot of money to, to get a place to live, depending on what I do. And I don't really want to spiral into that right now, but essentially I need plans and immediate cash for the future. So I'm just saving up a cash pot at the moment or an investment pot or whatever it ends up being. My sinking funds, I put 600 into travel because that was low for summer. So that's up to a thousand now, which I'm feeling pretty good about. If I needed to go to Greece with just that, I could. Uh, I might put in probably another 300, 200, 300 just to be on the safe side, but I'm hoping I don't spend that much, quite frankly. I don't think there's any need to. I just get paranoid about not having it. Tax got 538.10. It wasn't going to get that much, but then it was close enough that I was like, okay, I'll just, um, <laughs> I'll just bump it up and do it because I pay, I have three installments that are 638.10 and I already had 100 in there. So I just made it up to the next installment, which means there's nothing in that sinking fund now, but I have made a payment. Um, it hasn't shown up on my account yet, though, because it takes a little while, but it's all gone through and I've got the confirmation number. Uh, we also go down here into my sinking funds haven't changed here. I was going to put 100 in to gifts and Christmas, but I did decide just to put 207 in because that bumped up the money I had, which was 93 to 300 which is what i need for it to be fully funded so these four things home tech medical gifts christmas hair um are fully funded in as much as i decided to have that be the balance it was quite an arbitrary decision and what i think i'm going to do or not think because i've decided to do it i'm going to put 25 pounds into each of these every month from now and we're going to call the balance that it's got now the minimum so if I ended up getting, for example, I know I'm going to have to August and wigs at some point. So, okay, 
when I spend that, I don't want to have to worry and be like, oh, I've got to now rebuild it up and it's empty and if something happens and blah, blah, blah. Now, I don't think I'm going to have a hair emergency, but if it was medical, if it was tech, like bigger things, sometimes you need bigger pots of money. So I'm going to call those minimums. I'm going to keep it ticking over every month and probably just not stop. So 25 a month will be 100 total for those sinking funds. And I'm fine with that. Now, it's hard to tell now because it does say the rollover is 13.95, which is absolutely not the case because I've still got to pay um, pension and I've still got to put money into my future, which I will do when I get paid in a week or so from YouTube. But I will deal with that when I get back from my weekend. I do have a long weekend because I am going to Dubai. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that. I've got to stop filming these days later. I don't even remember what my intro said. <laughs> but pretty happy with how it's going so far. Happy at being able to reinvest the money that I was paying in other things uh, to more useful uh, categories to me, like my future, whatever I decide to do with it. So, yeah, feeling pretty good. And as the months progress, the next two or three months, I think we'll really settle into what a more permanent picture of this is going to be. Okay, everybody, I hope that all made sense. Thank you so much for watching. That's where we are at the moment. And I will see you for the mid-month check-in. Thank you and goodbye.